In this video, we're going to be installing these carbon fiber rims on my 1987 Schwinn Latour. And as you probably gathered from the title, I did buy these for $100 off Facebook Marketplace. They are obviously used Chinese carbon fiber rims, but they're in pretty good condition. So let's go ahead and install them and see how they turn out. I'll go ahead and start with the front ones, considering they should be a little bit simpler. I started using this little bungee with this, I don't know what you call it, a bung on it or whatever, to hold the wheel to the frame so when it's up on the frame, it, it, uh, the wheel doesn't go flipping around. That's actually worked pretty good. Okay, of course, first we're going to need to go ahead and take my tires off. I really like these wheels though. I haven't had to do like anything with them. They've just worked like perfectly ever since I got them. They're like perfectly true, but let's see how much they weigh in comparison to the carbon ones. I don't know if it's going to be that much of a difference because these carbon, these carbon rims here are pretty deep. I want to say they're 50 or 60 millimeters. So the weight may not be that much different. Not sure if you guys can see that, but it says, 857 grams, 857, 738. So they actually are a bit different. 739, 7, 739, 857. So that's not too bad. I'll be saving at least on the front, you know, 100 and, 120 grams, right? So the inside of the carbon one is indeed, I'm getting 13.3 millimeters which does kind of limit you because you should, as what I've heard, is what I understand, you shouldn't double the width of your tire compared to the inside of your rim. So 13 times two is 26. So 25 millimeter tire is about the biggest you should mount on that rim. Now let's go ahead and check my old uh, Mavic ones from the Pinarello, just uh, for reference, it looks a little bit bigger, I think. Yeah, 14.7. So these could actually run, you know, a 28. 14 times two, 28. So they're a little bit wider. Okay, anyway, let's go ahead and put the tube and tire. And I hope that my inner tube here, and it, uh, it's not. <laughs> All right, well, first problem we ran into is the valve, even though it's a pretty long one, isn't long enough for this wheel. See that there? It actually doesn't reach through, so. Okay, we're back, and I finally got some inner tubes with long enough uh, valves to work with these 60 millimeter carbon rims. These are the uh, inner tubes. I can put a link in the description if you want, but they have 80 millimeter long valves. So these should work for 700C 18 to 25 millimeter wide tires. And uh, that's actually what we have today, some 25 millimeter wide tires. There's some used ones, but they should be in decent enough condition to work today. So let me go ahead and grab one of those and we'll try to mount the tire onto the wheel. Here's the tire. It's a, it's actually it's the same tire that I have on the bike now. It's not exactly the same one. It's the same, you know, same tire brand and model. It's the uh, Michelin Pro 3 race. I bought these in France, I believe, uh, for pretty cheap. I want to say maybe 20 euros a piece, 25. I don't remember exactly, but in any case, or maybe I bought them in Switzerland, but in any case, they're, they're relatively inexpensive for fairly light tires, but they're definitely not so good for puncture protection or anything like that. So first of all, I always like to try to line the, the branding, excuse me, up with the valve stem. I don't know, it's not a big deal to me really. Some people do that a lot, but I just, you know, it's easy to do, so why not? All right, with just a little bit of force, I was able to get the tires on halfway. Now let's go ahead and stick one of the, uh, the inner tubes on. This is a pretty difficult case um, just because the, the rims are so narrow. The narrower the rims I find the harder it is to get everything working because as you can see here there's not even a lot of room to get that valve in. It's very minimal. Okay so I got it in there though. Now, now it has some room. 
And then I'll just go around and tuck the inner tube in like that. Okay, so I got the, the inner tube kind of tucked away in there. It wasn't too bad. Now probably the hardest part is gonna start now and that's actually getting the rest of the tire uh, mounted onto the wheel. So let's go ahead and start that. We're at just about 80 PSI. I'll give it one more pump. Two. All right, I went ahead and got both of the tires mounted and let's go ahead and put the front wheel on and see how it looks. Now, the way I like to clean this, I actually feel kind of guilty about for a couple of reasons. Number one, I know it's not the proper way. It's not the good way to clean it. Number two, um, my wife doesn't like the smell, but I actually use gasoline. <laughs> it's very cheap and it actually does like degrease really well. It's probably a much better, less stinky, less toxic way of doing that. I should just look that up online, probably. So I just do like that, shake it around a bunch, take it out. And then like, yeah, everything just comes right off. It looks super clean now. But for the, the main cassette body, I'm actually gonna use some of my citrus cleaner. I got this at Walmart for a couple bucks and it actually seems to work really good for just about everything. Definitely gonna continue buying that, this. So just spray it down, nice and heavy, and just try to wipe off as much grease as I can. That looks pretty clean actually, not too bad. All right, cool, we're done. So, got everything cleaned up, half decent looking. Let me know, anybody watching, if you're supposed to put grease on this. I usually don't, but I have a feeling maybe I should. The thing is, I think I take this stuff apart frequently enough. I don't really have problems sometimes not greasing things as much as you should. I'm not really sure if you're supposed to put grease on that or not. I probably should, but I'm not sure. This is a, a 1140 cassette. Okay, nice and snug, not too tight. I'm not really sure if I'll be able to finish this tonight because uh, my family and I are getting ready to go on a walk. Feels like it doesn't fit in quite as well as the other one did for some reason. Come on, there we go. Well, it seems like it never fails, but in almost every video I make, I get the file out. And sure enough, I'm about to get the file out again because it seems like I did measure it. I took the wheel off and measured everything. This axle is almost exactly the same as this slot. And so it's just not fitting on this side. And that's why I'm having some trouble getting this wheel in here. So I'm about to take it back off and I'm gonna take the file out and just take a little tiny bit off, I hope. All right, let's try that. We only didn't file too much, but I would rather uh, take too little and try it than go too far and then have it loose. Nope, that's actually okay. Uh, I don't wanna loosen it up anymore, so there we go. <laughs> Crazy, that was it, just a little bit of filing. Okay, there's still one more thing I have to do, which is change out the brake pads because when you have carbon wheels, you actually have to have a different type of brake pad that's made just for carbon wheels, so. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, well, that came out pretty easy and it seems pretty simple the way it works. This, this uh, bolt here just, you know, locks in the pad. So here's our carbon specific ones. Oh, I see. Holy moly. This is supposed to be the, whoever set this caliper up, this is, says L. This whole entire tray is the wrong side too. My goodness, oh yeah, yeah. See that? that L? Okay, after quite a bit of fooling around with it, I think I got everything set up pretty well. You know, I had to adjust this obviously because uh, the rim was wider. I had to uh, adjust 
that guy to get the tension right between the two so they're both or tension i'm not sure if it's really tension but just making sure that both the pads contact the rim at about the same time so i think i got it pretty much i don't know if you can see now sorry about that pretty much got it nice or pretty decent now anyway i think it's good enough all right so i'm all done with the front now i'm going to move on to the back and what i was saying before about the back is that it's actually a totally different caliper. It's a, uh, what do they call it, Tiagra, whereas the other's Ultegra. And uh, this one didn't have, didn't have the type of pad that takes a cartridge. Oh, hey there. Guess what? It's Saturday morning. I'm going to try out these wheels. I'm going to go on a little ride to the uh, little beach we have in town. And uh, I don't know. Let's get going. And by the way, one more thing I wanted to tell you before we get on the road. Uh, a company called VB reached out to me and asked if I wanted to test their cycling shorts and a pair of their gloves. So that's what I'm wearing right now. They are pretty, pretty nice. Pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, they're good. I don't know what to say about them. Uh, I've never actually had dedicated cycling shorts that aren't bib shorts. So, I mean, they're nice. I don't know what to say. But I haven't actually got on the bike with them yet, so we'll see if I like them when I actually get riding. Uh, they also sent some gloves. Let me show you those real quick. So let's try them out. I'll be trying out some new wheels and some new gloves today. Anyway, let's get on the road. All right guys, well I've been riding for about 20 minutes now and I thought it'd be a good time to do a quick update on the equipment. First of all, the wheels, um, really good. I can tell they're quicker uh, accelerating. I can feel the lightness, that's a good thing. They feel a little bit twitchy. Actually, I can feel they're quite lighter than the old ones, maybe even stiffer. Um, I don't really like that as much. It doesn't quite feel as stable, but uh, maybe I'll get used to it. Secondly, I can hear them. They actually make a lot more sound when you hit little bumps, you can really hear it. Uh, even leaning into a corner, I think maybe the valve stem is rattling or it almost sounds like something's rattling. That's about all I can say about the wheels. Now, the other thing I want to take a look at is the cycling shorts. I've had uh, two bib shorts in my life. I've never had any exclusively uh, cycling shorts without the bib part, but I can say these are really great. They fit me perfectly. Padding is good, quality looks good. So I don't know, I can't complain about that. The other thing is the uh, the gloves. I mean, I had some decathlon ones before. They're not that much different. I don't feel. Maybe these are the padding's a little bit thicker. My decathlon ones were pretty cheap, so the padding was thin, but they're great. They're excellent. They have little pull tabs, so you can take them off more easily. Anyway, uh, thanks VB for the um, for the equipment. And if you want, you can send me a, a jersey too, and I'll have the full kit. So if you're watching this.
the wheels I'm still not completely used to yet, but I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit more confidence with them. Whoa. Whoa. But I don't know if I'm ever gonna trust them coming down some kind of huge mountain or something like that. I guess that'll about do it for this video. Let me know if you want an update later on on these wheels, also on this cycling gear. Whew, anyway, it's getting really hot. We're still in February here in Florida and it's like 90 degrees or who knows what. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. See you guys later. Here comes the Harley. Bye.